Why is it that I recommend sitting on a property for about a year before you make any major modifications or changes? Hi, this is Justin Hitt from Prosperity Homestead. When you buy a piece of land, it is critical that you sit on it for the first year not doing nothing. Now, don't get me wrong. I know you're excited because you bought your first piece of property. You found that five acres. You found that 50 acres. And you're ready to get started with your small farm, homestead, or estate. And I'm telling you to take a break, to observe the land, to work on a plan. And you just want to get out there and go. Now, you can start with a garden. You could start cleaning up the property some, but don't make any major modifications to the property. You want to, when the day you sign that uh, mortgage or the day you cut the check to buy that piece of property, you want to have at least two or three high value activities that you can do with the land immediately. And let me tell you why. First off, buying land is a liability. Unless the land has some cash flow potential. Now, I know after you put $50,000 in this and you buy your house that and you know you clear the trees over here and you do this over there, yeah, you might have the potential. But no, I want you to, to look at the land that you purchase and immediately day one have some kind of value on the land without any additional financial obligation. Uh, one of the reasons is because we always underestimate how much the land's going to cost in either holding costs or you know maintenance or repairs. Uh, so maybe the first thing you do is move into the house that's already on the land. Or it could be to move a trailer onto the land and live in the trailer. Now, there's a lot of really nice travel trailers out there. And you can go live in a travel trailer or you can live in an RV or you can live in a, a small tiny house, for example. Or maybe you don't want to move to the land right away. And part of your observation period is a family camp out where your family is going to go over there and enjoy the land. And you can start dreaming about the land right then and there. Maybe you start your first garden. Maybe you clean up an orchard that's already there. Maybe you just simply cut paths on the property so that you can access the property better. But you do not do major projects on the property immediately, uh, such as ripping down fence lines or taking out buildings, because first off, the property is not permanent. You could go find a five-acre property and then you're still looking in the market and you find a 50-acre a property that's just a couple dollars more than the one you just bought. Maybe the economic environment has changed and now you might jump over to the other property. You might find out that when you're on the property, there are a lot of hidden expenses that you didn't expect and now you've spent all this money tearing out fences, cutting down buildings. Uh, you know, You didn't have that immediate value from the land. And you end up uh, get going underwater. Uh, one farmer I know uh, basically bought a tractor and all kinds of equipment. So they got the perfect piece of land. They built the perfect house on it. They built the perfect fences. They built. They got the perfect tractor. They got the perfect implements. And they still didn't grow any food. Now, eventually, they did grow food and having the right equipment was useful, but they could have started growing food long before they had the necessary equipment, and then they wouldn't have 15 pieces of equipment sitting around that they don't use. Uh, because, again, all that capital put out in advance of a plan is trouble. Now, the time it takes you from the day you sign the check and you, you bought the property till the first thing that you do on the property could be hours because you will have a written plan. Now, why do I talk about a written plan? Uh, I'm saying you're going to sit on the property to observe the property, to figure out what's best to go where. But that doesn't mean you can't have a written plan about the new barn you want to put up or the uh, where the hay pasture is going to be versus the animal grazing. Where's your zone one going to be? How far will it go out? A lot of these things you can survey out on paper before you spend the first dollar or you put in the first hour of work and you spend the time walking the property, observing the property, uh, you know, do you know where the flood zones are? Do you know where water sets on pasture, where water moves on pasture, or where the pasture is dry? Do you know what the soil conditions look like three feet under the soil? Are you aware of any cemeteries or uh, hazards or, uh, you know, uh, the priority of doing things? This allows you to build up a plan in writing, estimate the costs, start figuring out where the vendors are, and get this thing 
done once and for all. I see a lot of people that are like, well, I'm just going to do it myself. And they end up doing these tiny jobs, working and working and working and never really getting anything taken care of on their property. So you're not observing the property without any action. You're observing the property and building out a multi-phase plan that it gives you doable chunks of work that are built into projects. A project could just be a single sheet of paper, but it's going to describe the resources that you're using, the the intended outcome, some of the milestones that you have as you move towards the result there, and ultimately allows you to go out and just do the job. Now, it also allows you to have somebody else do the job if if you're too busy doing something else because you could work full time. So I know quite a few people who have bought a piece of land and they wanted to build a house on it and they wanted to do all the house building themselves. They were going to move on to the land and do all the house building themselves. So I asked the question, well, do you have the cash to buy the materials to do the building? And they said, no. I said, okay, will you have to continue to work in order to get the cash to buy the materials to build the building. Yes. Great. How much time each day does that allow you to build the house? Turns out they don't have any time to build the house, but that's their dream. And if they got fi- if you get fixated on the dream and you get started working on the dream, there's a cognitive bias that keeps you from stopping and reassessing the situation. So what we do is we draw up a plan. Okay, what kind of house do you want? What are your options when it comes to how you're going to build that house and then based on those options, what is most advantageous for your situation? Maybe working full time produces more than enough revenue to pay a contractor or to get a building loan, for example. And then when you're done, then you retire. So when the house is built, then you retire. And if maybe you want the experience or you enjoy you know, building the house, well, you can leave some things unfinished and you can finish them off. But I will tell you from experience that most people, when they do it themselves, don't get the job done, except when they write out a plan that has a tangible chunk of work that gets done and complete it, and then you move on to the next chunk of work. So if you're going to buy a piece of property and you're going to move out onto it, it doesn't have to be perfect to get started and you don't have to empty the bank in order to make it perfect, Um, but you can have a perfect plan that helps you prioritize activities, narrow the focus of where you're going to work. So rather than getting uh, the the third problem, I see a lot of times people get a piece of property and then they want to do everything on it. They want the garden. They want the animals. They're building the chicken coop and they're doing the garden and they're doing the, the root cellar and they're doing all this stuff at the same time. And really nothing is done well. So can you see where I'm coming from here? You acquire a piece of property. You observe it while you're creating clear and specific plans for the major activities you're going to do on a property. I volunteer at a location and they have the potential to rent an excavator and we're going to go do farm maintenance. Rather than just doing a generic farm maintenance, we're actually going to have uh, the clearing of the drains around a a detention dam. Uh, We have an erosion control project over by the lake. These are specific tangible activities that can be done one at a time so we're really uh, building on our successes and this is going to give you more confidence working on your farm it's also going to allow you to take a break between projects so um, a lot of times on a farm a lot of folks don't understand is that some projects are seasonal so you don't go put fences up in the winter you don't necessarily garden during the winter but you might clean out the greenhouse, clean out the workshop. You might, uh, you know, during the winter, bring in bulk materials if you have hard hard roads. Um, you might even gravel a road during the winter. You might repair fences during the late fall and winter when it's not too wet. But when it's spring, there's different things you're going to do. Um, so you really want to have this seasonal plan built up after your first year at the property. You want to do a lot of small successful jobs early. So your cosmetic work around your core house is important. You don't need to go fix your whole fence line. You want to get the around the house going. Uh, while you're doing that, you're doing the plan for the cost to do the fence line. I like to, I really do like to figure out the cost if I hire somebody to do it 
versus doing it myself because there's an unlimited supply of other people to hire to do work. Uh, the constraint is your own time and your own money. So if again, if you get a piece of property and you have one or two things that cash flow immediately, you can take the residual value or the net income value of that activity and you invest it in the next activity. And then you kind of get this beautiful snowball effect where uh, the the farm comes together quickly. Also, having your vision in writing gives you a better uh, way of measuring your success because there's a lot of farms out there that are like every project just happened at the same time and they're laying everywhere and no project is really done. Um, but ultimately, uh, the observing the land helps you understand where the project should should go. Um, getting access to the land, uh, getting uh, the basic home site identified is more important than getting the house built because you can get a house built really quick in the wrong place and that'll be trouble for much longer than uh, taking time up front. And finally, um, even just a simple species and plant inventory can tell you so much more about the land than just jumping on it and, and making it happen. Um, you will make it happen, but you'll make it happen more sincerely, more sustainably, and more powerfully when you give it some time. Give it some time. See, things slow down in the rural areas. Things slow down on the farms and are much more deliberate and when they're more deliberate, you're more likely to get satisfaction and results. Now, from a permaculture perspective, you're going to start in zone one, and then you're going to move to zone two, and then you're going to move to zone three. You're going to go through with water, access, and then so on and so on and so on. If you've got questions about your small farm, homestead, or estate, whether you're about to build one or you are uh, revitalizing your your property... Um, you can visit me, Justin Hitt, at Prosperity Homestead. That's www.prosperityhomestead.org. And we have additional resources, a newsletter, a membership site, and we have coaching and consulting services to help you get maximum utility value from your, from your land. That land want, wants to be an asset. It wants to be bountiful. It wants to grow in abundance. And with the right planning and the right approach, you can certainly do that in any climate. Now, we specialize in the temperate climate. And a lot of times, if you don't get to see two or three seasons on a, on the temperate climate on the property there, you're going to miss out a lot of things. So, So, folks, I hope this has really helped you. I would love to hear from you. Again, visit www.prosperityhomestead.org and just go to the contact page and ask your questions. Thanks for listening.